Welcome back to the channel, guys. The mailman just dropped off a couple of clamp meters from our buddies over at Tessman. And, uh, this is a TCM300A, which I believe is a AC only clamp, and the TCM300D, which is a AC DC clamp. But other than that, these two smart meters are exactly the same. So, well, let's have a, a quick look at them here. Both come with nice little cases. Both come with nice little manuals. And uh, let's see what language is it? English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, and I'm guessing Chinese. Have a look at the meters themselves. All right, these look fairly compact. Each one comes with a thermocouple and a set of leads. The leads are pretty standard and same over here. So we can leave them in there. And each one comes with uh, three batteries. Let's take them apart and have a look inside. Both got uh, brass inserts for the battery doors. And uh, they're looking pretty much identical. The only difference is up here. You can see the connection here. This is uh, coming in with a ribbon cable following from a, a Hall effect sensor possibly even an amplifier up in here and this is just coming in with a couple of wires you've got a metal loop in here let me have a close look at some of these chips here see if there's anything on them so i'm not sure what this is it's a, an sf 2613 b i think it may be a display driver this chip here which is probably the analog to digital converter or multimeter chip and uh, the brains behind it is completely wiped of any kind of markings and this here is just a, a two kilobit serial EEPROM. And then you've got some discretes and a relay. There's your resistor network there, programming header there. And you got nice separation on the inputs here. The battery connects to the main board through these nice little springs so you don't have any additional wires. No fuses in here to replace because all the current measurements are done through the clamp. So let's put it back together, put some batteries in them and turn them on. They both come up at auto mode. Uh, they have a very different idea of what the temperature is in, is in here. I think this one here is probably more correct because I, I like my lab fairly cool. Let's take out another meter to compare. All right, on the Ryman here, we have it saying 16.67 degrees and it's coming up with 17.4. Uh, so that's pretty close to what the, the Ryman was saying. This one's reading a little bit high for sure. Let me check one more meter here. Now I just plugged that into my Siglent SDM3055 bench meter and it's saying it's at 20.3 degrees. It's, it's saying 12.7. So again, we're, we're all over the map with temperatures. Like we've got five different meters here and not one of them can agree on what the temperature is using exactly the same probe. There you go. Okay, back to these two little gems here. Uh, let's put them back into auto mode. And we'll start, uh, we'll start testing them. Okay, so it's coming up with one ohm. And uh, because it's below the 50 ohm limit, it's beeping the beeper. This shouldn't beep the beeper. 100 ohms right on the money so it, they auto range pretty quickly not as quickly as some but i mean that that's pretty fast right so it's not only figuring out it's in ohms mode but it's 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 auto ranging correctly to give us 1k ohm here and here we go here 9.99 uh, the accuracy is 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 great yeah i got no issues with that at all it's very good and very fast. Let's try this one now on ohms. 
Okay. Matching the other one very well. Very speedy. No problem there at all. All right, let's try capacitance. Let's try the 26 UF. He's got that right too. That's good. That's pretty good. And that's okay as well. Let's, okay, let's put it into diode mode. Let's see what the Bryman says. What voltage are they testing with here? So. 3.23 volts, 3.24 volts, that's pretty good. That's a good voltage to test diodes with. So I should be able to pick up all these diodes here and get them roughly right. Yeah, that's right. Good for a Shockley diode, silicon diode, just perfect. Red LED, lights it up and gets the uh, voltage right. Amber LED, green LED, yeah. It's not putting much current through them. So half a milliamp, that's a nice low current. Let's do some DC volts next. So we got the, these will be put into auto mode for this. So according to the manual on these, in auto mode, they will register a voltage uh, above 0.8 volts. I'm gonna test that now. We'll see if that's accurate or not. Let's start out here at 0.6 volts. I've got 0.6 volts. It's not registering that. And bring it up to 0.7 volts. It's uh, coming in at 0.7 volts. So that is uh, a bit better than the specification. Okay, that's that's fine. If I connect the meters together, they're going to interfere with each other. So for the rest of the uh, voltage measurements, I'm going to put it into voltage mode. Okay, that way we can connect up all the meters together. They all agree. Let's, uh, let's bring those, the voltage way, way, way down. We're down at 0.1 volts. They're all agreeing. 0 0.05 volts, they all agree, 0 0.001 volts, I think they're, they're doing fine, they're doing exactly what the Bryman's doing, 5 volts, 9 volts, bring it up to about 30 volts or so, let's see if we can get more volts here, okay, so we should have about 160 volts, so we've got 162, 162.2, 162.1, yeah, they're all in perfect agreement. No issue there at all. Okay. Let's get the dangerous voltages off it for now. Okay, we're back to auto mode on this one. I just want to test if it picks up the AC just as nicely as it picks up the DC. So we're going to put in 700 millivolts RMS into it right now. And it does. It picks that up. So again, it, it's feeding specifications on the uh, auto for voltage anyway. Okay, we've got 10 millivolts AC going in here. Let's bring it up to 100 millivolts. Um, okay, yeah, that's, that's perfect. We'll bring it up to one volt. That's good. We've got three volts. They all agree. 7.07 .07 volts. And yeah, they're all good. Okay, and now I'm just gonna plug it into the mains. All perfect agreement there. There's no issue at all with the accuracy of these meters. So let's bring it up here to Hertz. And we bring this one up as well to Hertz. Bring this one up to Hertz too. And we'll run some frequencies down into these. Now, let's see what the specification is. It should go up to 10 megahertz and with an accuracy of uh, 3% plus three digits. So we've got 60 hertz going in here. They're all fine. Let's go to one kilohertz. Everything's good. Let's go to 10 kilohertz. Everything's good. We've got three volts RMS going into it. So let's bring that down, see where we lose them. Two volts, one volt, half a volt, 400 millivolts, 300 millivolts. 200 millivolts. Everything's dropped out at 200 millivolts. So, 
and everything comes back in at 300 millivolts. All right, that's fine. Let's put it up back up to about uh, two volts RMS. 100 kilohertz, one megahertz, 10 megahertz. Everything's fine except for the Bryman is lost and gone forever. Okay, uh, so these are meeting their specifications. I like the dual display, that's nice as well. Let's check continuity. We'll check that in both manual and auto mode. Okay, here we go. We're gonna try it in auto mode. Okay, it takes about a half a second in auto mode. So let's put it into manual mode and see. It's very fast, very loud, and it is latched. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna try some current tests on them. Both of these can do inrush current. So I've got a, a, a pump out there, I can try that. I've always wanted to know what the inrush on that pump was because uh, I've got an oversized solid state relay on it, probably more than it needs, and I'm gonna find out today. Okay, we've got it all set up here to do some current. In, I'm going to do it in auto mode on this. It's going to be DC current. So this is the only one that can do DC current. Let me turn this on. What it does when you turn it on is it does a, a little calibration and that calibrates the DC clamp to zero. It should be at zero now. And according to the, the manual, it will detect as little as 0.8 amps. So I've got the DC load set up for 0.8 amps and that we're going to turn it on right now and everything is good so let's see if it'll detect even less than that let's try 0.7 amps it'll do 0.7 amps let's try down 0.6 amps it'll do 0.6 amps as well so it's better than specification on dc current so let's now put it into manual mode on current and we'll try some other values here. Let's try and get it down into the tens of milliamps here. Now we'll try, there's 10 milliamps. Let's try 50 milliamps, 100 milliamps. We're doing pretty good. One amp. Yep, yeah, we've got pretty good agreement there. So we've got three amps here. It's great, that's fine, that's good. Now I'm going to try my pump, and I guess I'll use this one. So my pump has an inrush current of 47.3 amps, so that's good to know. I uh, made a good choice in putting that 100 amp solid state relay on that. So let's try the NCV mode. Turn this one back on. NCV, probably work better here. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, it works fine. And uh, we'll try the live mode too. And we'll put it into this terminal here. And we should be able to then tell the difference between live and the neutral. So live and neutral. So it's working fine. Yeah, that's perfect. That's a very nice feature. It's, it's showing up more and more on meters these days. And I, I, I like it a lot. Now these are rated 600 volts cat three, but it is a CE rating. It's not, they don't have any uh, independent body rating their, their meters for them. Yeah, there's no CSA or TUV or UL or anything like that. So, but they do say in their advertisement that they are self-certified and they do go through the certification process. Certainly they would be good for class one and class two. And I think both of these meters here would be perfect for the homeowner, uh, the hobbyist, the uh, electronics hobbyist as a second meter if they wanted a clamp meter. I think they'd be even good for an appliance repair person, you know, residential type appliances, residential air conditioning, residential heating or something like that. So these would be fine for that sort of thing. Anyway, I will leave, uh, I will leave links to them down below if you wanted to pick them up. They're available on Amazon. For me, uh, out of the two of them, this, this would be the one I'd go for because of the DC capability. All right, thanks guys. I hope you got something out of this. Leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.